Welcome to the Wisdom Flow Yoga teacher training question and answer session. So I'll start in with a question that commonly gets asked. How do the 200 hours accumulate? When we're together for 16 days and probably eight to 10 hours in person together every day, that's 150 or 160 hours. Where do the other 40, 50 hours come from? And the answer is twofold, homework and then projects that you do when you're in your home community. Each evening you have um, a quiz to take, you have some homework to complete, you have a little mini presentation to put together for the next day, handling about two to three hours of homework every evening. When you get back home, we want you to have a direct experience of teaching to new students. Two free classes in your community that you need to complete as a home project before you're ready to be certified. And that certainly takes uh, 20 or so hours for you to prepare. If that sounds intimidating, like teaching to strangers, teaching to strangers in my community, um, it doesn't have to be um, that your classes that you publicize are all just cold calls. It can be, you know, people you work with, it can be your family you invite, it can be people that you feel comfortable with, especially for your first couple classes. And then on Maui, the people who come to the classes are regular students of our studio, and they love that everyone's being so brave. They're not here to judge or assess or any of that. They're just like, oh my gosh, you're doing it. Everybody will be cheering you on. But that direct experience of actually taking what you are learning from the teacher training and then creating a project, a presentation that's all your own, a class that's all your own, is a really great initiation. So, because really what we want to do is you feel like you have the tools to translate what you experienced here into I can actually create an experience for my people. So we kind of nudge you towards that with these projects. Another category of questions that we often get is, how do the accommodations work? I mean, that's a big thing, especially when you're coming from the mainland and you're already carving out a large amount of time and a big investment for the training, you wanna know, where am I going to stay? Our regular students who've become part of our yoga community and very good friends. And so they become the hosts for many of our students and their spare room will become your place to stay. It can be expensive, Maui accommodations. And so they'll offer as much as they can discount prices, anywhere from 60 to $80 a night. And in, if you're going to be you know, near the beach or in more luxury accommodations, then you're going to maybe pay closer to $100 a night. Sometimes people come and they just really want to make it a, a, an exciting vacation and they have the funds and they'll go on uh Airbnb or VRBO and they'll find a lovely place to stay on the island. We'll help you now. So once you sign up, we'll have direct conversations or exchange emails and make sure we put you in contact with the right people to get your accommodations set up. People sometimes ask is, do I need to rent a car? The answer is, it depends. If you stay with one of our hosts who's very close to the studio, which both Sarah and I live close to the studio, then we arrange to pick you up and you, we can do ride sharing. And once the group becomes cohesive and starts rolling together, there's a lot of ride sharing. Again, if you're somebody who really wants to turn this into a wonderful vacation, you want to explore the island, then you probably do want to make arrangements to rent a car. In order to arrive here, you have to pre-test, which you probably know if you've been looking into travel. And um, that's great in that um, presumably most, if not all people on the plane with you are COVID free. But there's always that um, sense of um, concern about transmission in transit because there, that's where there's a lot of mix up, right? And so something that Maui has offered for a while is a uh, post arrival second test free it's it's very simple here the way it's set up you can drive through you make your appointment online there's lots of appointments 
it takes hardly any time. Um, I've had probably 15 of those COVID tests. I, I test regularly uh, as sort of like the canary in my bubbles because I work for some, I, I work with sensitive people um, who are immune compromised. So it's important to me to know my status. And so um, I'm, I'm super comfortable helping people or chaperoning the second test. And what we would like to do is um, within the first couple of days of arrival, once everything's sort of settled in, um, is have the people in our group all take a test when they can. And then that way we know that our bubble of 10 teacher trainers and the two of us, we would test as well, are all coming in um, with trust to the best of our ability. And then it's on us as a group to sort of manage our exposure while we're together in that 16 days. Um, that just sort of felt like the best way to start a container where whether you wanna wear a mask or you don't wanna wear a mask, we are gonna be indoors together, working together over an extended period of time. And so it just felt like a good way to begin. And because it is free and there are locations all over the island, they offer testing six days a week. You get your results within two hours for me most of the time, sometimes end of day, but it just seems like why not take advantage of that? Um, start with a good platform. So if you have any questions or concerns about that, I'd love to hear it because we're still shaping up what that would look like and what we're requesting. Um, I did speak with one um, prospective student who uh, was a bit frustrated that she had to test again because it just feels like a really difficult thing on her end. Um, I don't know if she's had a lot of testing experiences and she's in a very remote place. And so that's why I'm here to, to help assure people that it is quite simple. The place I test is 10 minutes from the studio, close to upcountry. It's really easy to get there. Do we have to wear masks the whole time because she's working with a mask on all the time and she doesn't want to be having to do yoga practice with a mask on? Um, and we talked about different people's sensitivity, which would be something we would gauge once we know everyone that's committed. My assumption is that if people are willing to travel and be in a group for 16 days, they're probably okay with the contract that goes with that. Um, that there is a little element of risk, of course, we do our best to keep each other safe. Uh, so <clears throat> she doesn't want to wear a mask. We would prefer to be able to speak clearly and not have a mask on our faces. That's why we're asking for the, the second test. And then if people do feel like they uh, would prefer protection, we can set up a part of the room that is sort of like its own zone where people who would prefer to wear masks can be closer to the window, can work with each other specifically, not be um, mixed up with the rest of the group. But we'll address that if it comes up. Right now, it feels yeah. like most people are pretty confident or they'll have the opportunity to have the vaccine prior. Mm -hmm. We don't want to be impressing on people that they have to do this or have to do that. We feel like it should be consensual. So if you right. have impressions, please share them with us. Instead of impressing on people right now, our expectations of protocol once you arrive. I feel like when we get together as the group and everyone's had their pretest and we have the conversation as a group, when you see each other and you say, you know, I promise to do my best to be careful about this bubble that we're creating together, that's the better time to have that, in, that conversation about what we're gonna do from this point on until the end. that you can choose a set of props that are all your own once you're here and you can take them with you and launder the bolster cover or the blanket as you want and then you know bring it in it might be good too just for your home practice and doing your homework too to have those props at home yeah no we have plenty here yeah, yeah also if if anyone has something they'd like to have while they're here and they don't want to pack it. I can give you an, an address to send it to. I spent some time in Canada and I wanted to have locks and a mat and all of that stuff. And I did not want to pack it with me. So I had it sent, you know, Amazon <clears throat> to my aunt's house. So if there are specifics that you'd like to have while you're here, I can give you an address. We do have a well-ventilated studio. Maui is known for its lovely breezes. And right now we can see the trees outside just blowing in the wind. There's a ni really nice consistent cross breeze. We also have one of the Dyson air filters that runs quietly in the background.
and we have, of course, all the hand sanitizer and the antibacterial prop cleaning spray. So um, those elements are in place. When we break for lunch, it's actually brunch because we start so early, um, everybody gets their food and then meets under a big monkey pod tree in the park. So we're outdoors. While you have your lunch, we continue telling you stories and, uh, and teaching. Sometimes we'll take a walk around the park to digest. So we're gonna be outside a little bit every day, weather permitting. Um, and that too is a really nice, just refresher for the cycling of the We have a little refrigerator here at the studio and we stock it with drinks, power bars, and we'll have like muffins and things like that and juices here for you in the morning. For lunch, we're nearby lots of little restaurants, a food land with a big sushi um, center and deli. There are also fabulous food trucks just up the road. So Everybody t goes to their favorite place, gets their food, and then we meet under our monkey pod tree. Everybody does their own dinner, but there are um, loads of vegan options on the island. We should be really clear that we're not, but we're not bringing in full on meals. Um, it's the, the price of tuition is for the educational element of it. Years ago, went to one at the White Lotus Foundation in Santa Barbara, and I paid uh, $5,500 for a 16-day training, and I stayed in a yurt with uh, three other people, and then and they provided all the meals, um, and I paid for airfare, and, and that was 2002. The price, as you will find for residential and um, room and board included trainings, is going to be closer to six or seven thousand dollars that's why our price point is so low we have such a variety of people coming some are saying i'm staying with my cousin some are i really want a high-end beach accommodation and others live on the island so there's such a variety of people coming together with these trainings we wanted to just make the price about the education the training and then there's flexibility. Over time, we've learned to find the bare bones offering and then let each person flesh it out individually. Um, and another thing with food is we do have a little fridge in the studio. If you were wanting to do budget food for yourself, you could always shop wherever you're staying, presumably has a kitchen and you can make up a big batch of something and have it in the fridge here so that when session ends, your food is right there. I mean, that's more what I like to do for the training so that I'm just prepared and I'm not running around at, at the break time. I can really mm -hmm. chill out. We want this place to feel comfortable and we want you to use it like it's your second home. It's, it's kind of cool because some people really like discovering the food trucks and what's here on Maui. And it's actually kind of refreshing to go for the distraction of let, what are we going to have for lunch today? A little group will climb into a car together and go to the food trucks and others really like to get a little tray of vegan sushi. And, and so the, there's a variety of ways to get lunch. And then there'll be those who make it at home the night before and bring it in a Tupperware and have it in the fridge. Yeah. So there's options there. So one of the things that's important to us at Wisdom Flow Yoga is that we understand why we're doing what we're doing, why we're teaching the way we're teaching. Just like life can be logical and and practical and just about survival but we can sense that's not really the richness of why we're here that's not really the soul's journey and the same thing with with teaching there's a difference between naming a sequence of asanas that people physically move through and giving the base description of the outer form of each asana but to understand more how the body works to understand a little bit about the mind body connection and, and to be able to speak to that connection and the management of our own energy and the understanding of ourselves as energy, that's really important to us. There is sort of a weaving in our curriculum where we'll pulse um, deep into the science 
and talk about joint congruency and learn about that little glenoid fossa where the humerus head lives and what happens if your shoulder heads are chronically forward and then you try to move from that place of misalignment and the micro tears and, and what are the alignment principles and what should your cobra and up dog look like if you really wanna move in optimal alignment. So we really got into the science of alignment and how the body works. And then we move into, okay, so what does that mean for the soul and the heart? What does it feel like to live aligned with who you are? What does it feel like when you're living misaligned? And so in that way, we're hoping that, that there is a symbolism to the way that we're practicing and, and that you encourage that as a teacher to, for people to feel that the asanas, in a sense, are consecrated and creating um, an embodiment of, of higher intentions to live with integrity and to bring out the, the dignity and nobility and natural goodness within each person, not just physical fitness. Let me talk to a little bit about the practical way that we are organizing or reorganizing our curriculum. This is one of the upsides of the pandemic. But we started to create these big, beautiful graphics on it and these little slideshows that will go with each day's curriculum. And then we mounted a big screen TV in the studio. We will have this way of sharing the visuals with everybody so they don't have to have their head in small pages on a binder. When we move through the day's curriculum, we're going to have lots of juicy visuals. But the really cool thing is that when you go home, the slideshow that we shared is available to you online. So you have a lifetime connection to the curriculum. And embedded within those slides are the quizzes that you take. You have paperless quizzes. And then also embedded are little video bit to talk, to, talk you through teaching different sections of the class. Some of the structure resembles conventional schooling in that it's organized and the material's all there, but it's not um, presented in the way that um, we may be used to from conventional learning where you, you get information, you're supposed to memorize it, and then you regurgitate it on the quiz or the test, and then you leave and you're like, I, oh, it was so much, you know, we're, we're giving you so much content in the, the 16 days that sometimes it's just good to let it wash over. You hear it for the first time and then we'll review it and you'll hear it again. And, and we don't want you to feel like you have to remember and contain all of it when you walk out the door. This is just the first step towards exploring all of this stuff. And that's partly why this material is archived for you to revisit over and over and over again, because we don't even know which parts of it we want to use um, practically in any class. You know, you can only cram so much into one class anyways. And as you become a teacher where you're teaching frequently, then you have all of these resources to pick from and go, oh, that's a cool thing. I want to I want to build a class around this concept. I want to build a class around that. And so what we hope to give you is like an encyclopedia series that you can unpack for the rest of your experience as a yoga teacher. So if you feel like, oh, there's going to be a lot and I'm going to need to do quizzes and I'm going to need to remember all of the quiz work is for you to be able to reflect on what it means to you, what we explored that day. It's not about getting it right or wrong or passing or failing and all of that conventional structure that feels really stressful. We want it to be easy for you to learn. So that's why we have the TV and the slides and less of the head down, just trying to remember certain words kind of element that um, classical school can be. So hopefully that uh, inspires you. We'll do this thing where we'll talk about a small concept, maybe for 10 or 15 minutes, and then we'll stop and say, turn to the person next to you and tell them what you just learned. And then, and then we'll come back to presenting the next thing. For example, we might say, today we're going to learn about uh, ujjayi breathing. The word ujjayi is a Sanskrit word that means triumphant. Why do you think this sounding breath is called triumphant breath? Well, triumphant breath refers to being triumphant over a compulsive mind. When you can let the mind settle on the sound of the breath and the rhythm of the breath, it is less likely to spin off and go anywhere and it is more likely to stay right here in the rich powerful present moment okay turn to your partner and tell them what you just learned so that you're not just listening on and on to a lecture and it also sort of sparks an extra eager clarity in your listening because you know you're going to be asked to 
to share what you just learned. So that's just an example of the way that we try to embed a really nice pulse into each day's flow. We're coming together at 6 a.m. So it's really good to have some long sleeves and you know maybe a, a polar tech or, or a nice yummy sweater for the morning. And also we come into a, a silent circle and go right into meditation. And so there'll be some initial stillness in that um, early morning. So it's good to feel warm and to have a little bit of bundle up. But in the uh, afternoon, when we are under the monkey pod tree or walking through the park, you, you do want to have, you know, your summer clothes, your short sleeves and your nice uh, shorts and and what we call slippers, which, you know, means your sandals. So the last two days of the training are reserved for the final. So we basically have a whole buffet of yoga classes taught by you guys on those last two days. And then Sarah and I are with you and we'll be your DJ. And then we're also just observing and taking notes right? So that you have a little bit of feedback. And sometimes students like to film themselves. So we'll help set up their phone or whatever filming device so that they can review, which we highly recommend. And you can see where you were clear, where you got a little muddled and uh, start that lifelong process of refining <laughs> your voicing and your teeth. Last day, which is a Sunday, um, we end in the late afternoon and then we meet at Sarah's house and we have a celebration, which is when we feed you. Um, and, and make you wonderful drinks. And we watch the sunset together and hand out your um, certificates and, and talk story and enjoy the relief of having made it through the training. <laughs> so you wanna make sure that you plan to leave um, a day, at least one day after the last day of the training so that you can enjoy that celebration. The weather here is challenging and we are breaking away from the studio, then my house is a place that we, we go sometimes. It's five minute drive, not even, and it's got lots of space. It's got a really beautiful view. There's room to be outside or inside. There's a pool that you can take a dip in if you wanna just have a refresh in between. So um, we will kind of be mixing up our, our venues when we start feeling like, all right, people are restless. They've been trapped inside too long and we'll go work out on the lawn and, and, and just be outside, get some air. So we have options too. Right. We have a teacher here at the studio and she is also an Ayurveda practitioner. We've brought her into the fold. She is going to lead us through the basics of Ayurveda, which you might say is sort of the medicine way of the yoga path. And she'll talk about the doshas and, um, nutrition and lots of juicy stuff. And she's also going to, in the afternoon on that same day, go through really wise use of prop to be more inclusive. How props can be used, not just for deepening alignment, but also for um, including people who might have limitations. One of the things that we want to cultivate in our teaching is inclusiveness, which means we want to have a broad spectrum of ways to teach. Maybe we find our favorite, and if we run a studio, we're going to find other teachers who can do the other style so that we have more of a broad spectrum of offering to the community. But we want you to leave with an awareness, not just of one style. We want you to be... Um, aware of it, at least two basic styles. One, the more dynamic pulsing vinyasa flow, which is so fun, but not always appropriate, right? So we also want you to have in your um, toolkit an understanding of, of, of a basic hatha yoga class where there is not this pumping vinyasa flow between each sequence, that there is more time to digest the pose, more time to explore alignment. As we move through the training, you'll have the opportunity to develop a basic vinyasa flow class and a basic hatha yoga class. And as you move towards creating your practical final, you'll start to feel, which feels like is 
the right teaching method for me? Which am I naturally drawn to or which do I want to start with? And then you'll have a choice. Ooh, I want to follow those Hatha videos and, and I want to put together my final project from that vein. Or, ooh, I really like the dynamic vinyasa. I want to put together my final from that vein. So you will have those choices. And, and even beyond that, some people come in having already taken a teacher training or having a strong idea of a way that they want to teach or a style that they want to teach. And they start to kind of embed that into their final project and it becomes their art project. So we want you to feel confident, which is why we offer you scripts and structure for classes that work well, that are well sequenced, that are reliable, that are accessible to many people. And we um, suggest these ones, but if people come in with some other impression that they want to explore, there's room for that too. So mm. don't feel like it's a Bikram thing where you have to learn it this way and you only say it this way and that's what you're judged on. There's a lot of flexibility for you to make it your own. Yoga Alliance, which is the accrediting body for um, yoga teachers and, and their education, offers a level one certification, which is the first 200 hours. Once you complete that, you can move to a 500 hour certification by adding the advanced 300 hour training. So the 200 hour training is a prerequisite for the 300 hour training. And in that training, we go deep into functional anatomy and therapeutics and how do I teach an inversion? The world is changing hugely because of the pandemic. And a lot of teachers, you may even know this in your own community, a lot of yoga teachers have had to close their studios. Um, and a lot of yoga teachers have decided, I'm gonna let go of the bricks and mortar and I'm gonna be a Zoom teacher. We want you to be familiar with ideas of how to be a good Zoom teacher or live stream teacher, if that's the avenue that you want to choose. And how might you engage your students and cultivate a business um, as an online yoga teacher. And then there are others, and I'm more in this vein of, I, I just love the magic of sharing energy with bodies in a room. So I am really looking forward to everybody getting vaccinated and the virus fading so that we can be together, warm bodies in a room, sharing energy again. And in general, we do have two hour session where we'll talk about the business of being a yoga teacher. Can you make a living being a yoga teacher? What does that look like? What are, what are some of the avenues of business? Running a bricks and mortar studio, um, running an online uh, service. Uh, what if I wanted to lead retreats in different parts of the world? What if one day I wanted to be um, a teacher trainer school? And we have teachers who've graduated from Wisdom Flow who are conducting Wisdom Flow yoga teacher trainings in their communities. People who want to just be affiliated with the school and use our curriculum as they uh, train teachers in their own communities. So there's lots of fun business uh, possibilities to talk about and we do get to that in the training.